What's up, my construction entrepreneurs? This is Tyrone Jones here with the Construction Entrepreneur School. <laughs> construction Entrepreneur School Services. Hey, this is uh, my little sidekick with me today. I really say I was so. Hello. Just got a tight part and go. He didn't want to go. But then he changed his mind, though. And I have to go. <laughs> that happens, right? All right. So, hey, listen. What's up, my construction entrepreneur? So, hey, I wanted to jump on here uh, uh, for you guys just tuning in. I'm in Cali, um, uh, Riverside County area. I'm probably about 45 minutes from San Diego. Um, another. Uh, hour 45 minutes from LA uh so that's where I'm at I'm, I'm close to uh uh Temecula uh uh Pachanga Casino I think a lot of people know about that all uh, wine country you know where all the wineries are at I'm close by there too anyway so it's rainy like cats and dogs uh and it's going to be rainy uh it's been raining for the last three days um uh, which you know my guys only work two of those three days. And then it's supposed to be raining next week, too. So I'm, basically everything is shut down. You want to sit down, buddy? Yeah. Basically everything is shut down. Um, and I mean, my my deal still moves forward. Billing, estimating, um, you know, uh, meetings, dealing with issues. Uh, RFIs, it just never stopped. But I wanted to jump on here to kind of talk about, uh, you know, uh, how how do I find jobs? Where do I look at them? What's, what are the most high value jobs for me? And uh, what is that total bidding process? Because, you know, finding jobs, putting on jobs, landing and getting on water with jobs is the blood cycle of your business. You need to constantly bid, 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 and get awarded, get awarded, start these jobs, collect money, get paid, complete them, and continue the cycle. And you have to continue the cycle while you have other jobs. It's better to have, I feel, um, there's it's, it's better to have too many jobs than not enough jobs. Now, what do I mean by having too many jobs? Like right now, I got too many jobs. Um, I got a total of, I want to say six jobs right now. Um, and they vary from, uh, from various, various dollars amounts, you know? So, uh, I got some, I got like, uh, two jobs over a million. I got, a uh, you know, a couple of jobs at around two, two, two eighty, three hundred, three twenty. Uh, I got some hundred thousand dollar jobs that are just wrapping up. Um, so, um, so we're going to talk about, um, where, where do I find jobs at? Right. So right now I got jobs on my bid list. I keep a, a, a bidder's list here. I won't be sharing the screen with you as of right now, but I'm going to look at my calendar here. I do have a job that's on my bid list. Um, I got a bid coming up on the second. Yeah, I got a bid coming up on the second. Let's see here. And I keep a folder with bids in progress. Yeah, I just got one bid coming up on the uh, second, and it's for Saddleback College Science Math. Science Math Building Project. And I think that project is with Bernard's. They're a pretty big contractor. So uh, that job is probably going to be in a million dollar range. Um, so I'm hoping to get that. Now, what makes that job attractive to me? So what makes that job attractive uh, to me is that one, that job was sent to me by the general contractor. So, uh, and I don't know if that general contractor is the CM or they directly with the owner, right? Uh, or 
Well, I don't know if they're the CM or the GC. Let me say that. Um, because it, it it could vary, right? And I don't even know if that's a least least back type of job. What's up? This is Zoom. No, you could just exit. Yeah, Ricardo Zoom. And if I need to do some editing in anything, then I upload it to YouTube. That does not make sense. Why wow, you want me to do a live video? What if I make errors? What if I get inter interruptions where I have to edit it out? This allows me to edit the video. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this my sidekick has some questions here. So bear with me. Bear with me for everyone that got kiddos. Um. So. Um. So yeah, I don't know if it's a lease lease back job or. or Multi prime um, type of job, but uh, and maybe I'll get into those terms too as well. But that job was sent to me by them, and they basically told me it's their job. That means that it's not bidding with several different GCs, it's just bidding with them. That means that they have the job, so I'm bidding with less competition. Because usually, when I when you're bidding with a job that belongs to a GC is less competition on the table than a hard bid that's with multiple GCs because when it's with multiple GCs, each GC has the line of subs that they normally go with. So it brings more of the concrete subs and more of the framers, the plumbers, the asphalt. It brings more of those subs into the pot and lowers your chances on getting a job. So you definitely want to build the relationship with these general contractors that get that get their own work. Now, a lot of these general contractors get their own work because they don't have a an operation that allows them to go into the competitive market. So they go and sell themselves to these clients, which allows them to uh, uh, get these contracts to do this work, and then in turn put it on the market to, to their uh, subs. And we bid on it and, you know, do the job, complete it, and it's all good. So going after work that belongs directly to the GC is number one priority for me. Now, I don't bid on a lot of non-prevailing jobs. My guys are so much working, so much used to working prevailing jobs because uh, they want to get paid the high bucks, right, which is mean high payroll for, for us. Uh, but it's okay. So I bid on those mostly prevailing wage jobs and um, uh, jobs that belong to the general contractor. Now, those jobs that belong to the general contractor are that I'm bidding on are mostly like lease lease backs. On these lease lease backs, you have to be a you have to have a skill and train workforce. That means your guys have to go through an apprenticeship training program to call themselves journeymen. So they have to actually get a journeyman's card uh, to be able to qualify to do those lease lease back jobs. Now, not all lease lease, not all jobs are lease lease back that belongs to the general contractor. So you don't necessarily have to worry about that. Another thing, I don't bid on PSA or union focused jobs. So uh, uh, project service agreement jobs, labor-based agreement jobs where they follow labor standards or labor practices. Uh, I'm not a, a labor union standards, union practices. I'm not a union company and I don't do jobs that fall under those guidelines. So any PSA, L LBAs, LPAs, um, things like that. Uh, project labor agreements. I stay away from those projects, uh, but I, I am with the ABC, um, and the ABC does act like a union in some sort, and um, it just acts like a union without having you tied to a unionized type of contract, you know, where you lose your a lot of your rights, what I feel as an owner. Um, not saying that it doesn't provide benefits for the employees or for who, whomever decides to go that route. I just decide as an owner, I don't want to go that route. Um, 
So I don't bet on those type of jobs. So I get invites every day. I probably get nine, 10 invites for jobs every day. Some of those invites are just updates and addendums to jobs that contractors want me to bid on. Now, I don't respond to all those jobs. I probably only respond to three of them out of all 50 that come in. And uh, we respond to them whether if we're going to bid on them or not, we respond to them. So if it's a general contractor that I usually do work for, then we'll go ahead and give them a response like, hey, we're bidding on it or hey, we're not. So they can know up front if we're going to be bidding or if they can count on our bid or if we're going to not be bidding or if they can count on our bid. Okay. So I get that come in. I get those jobs that come in on, our, on through email. Um, and then I go uh, also look on the Dodge report. Um, I don't, I, and that's a subscription base, right? I have a subscription base. I usually go with every year, like my renewal is coming up here soon. I think my renewal is about 1300 bucks a year. Um, and I don't usually find jobs on the Dodge report because I'm not usually looking on the Dodge report. Sometimes I am doing certain months and some, and most times I'm not, um, but I uh, I do try to look on there and utilize the service, but there's a lot of jobs on there. I go in there and try to get bid results. Um, I go in there and try to uh, get, uh, sometimes I'm able to get a list of general contractors that's been on a particular project that I heard about for one GC. Because once you get an invite for one GC on a project that you're interested in, you have to find the other general contractors that are bidding on that work so you can, you know, maximize your bid. You can turn your bid into everyone instead of just one general contractor. You never want to turn your bid into one general contractor if they do not have the job to fill. That is a big no-no. There's no sense wasting your time and putting all that time and energy into a job and only turning into one general contractor. Okay. Man, this guy is probably, <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. I think the art is built, uh, 431. Not already in books for this job. Yeah. Anyway, so um, I was getting an email to build some work. Uh, a lot of these contractors deal with Procor too when you're building work, but we'll get into that another time. So, um, um, uh, so using the Dodge report, um, if not the Dodge report, there's one other big one that I usually use too. Dodge report, and then there's one other one I forget about. Uh, Construct Connect, I think it's like Construct Connect, something like that. They own quite a bit of softwares out there anyway. Anyway, um, and then I will go on um, Planet Bids. Uh, Planet Bids, as long as you have a registration, you can go on, you know, you can type in the city, like City of Fontana, Planet Bids, and it'll take you to the bids for the City of Fontana. They take you for the bids for the city that you're searching, and it'll show you what bids are active and the bid results. I love Planet Bids because Planet Bids shows you the results at bid time. It said bid is is due at two o'clock. The results are on there at two o one, two o two. Like it's right, it's on there immediately, and most times, depending on how the bid is structured. It'll label the uh, subs and their pricing. So you can actually see who used your number. And that's the biggest thing about bidding is following up and getting feedback on your number. There's a there's a general contractor that's out there right now that I've done one project with, maybe two. And there's one person in their office that's part of the ownership and they don't get feedback. I'm looking to really consider not bidding to them any further anymore. There's one person that's good on their team, but 
it's so important to get feedback on your bid so you can see where you're at. This helps you judge the market. This helps you be able to tailor your bid uh, uh, to the market so you can make sure you get work. Uh, uh, it also helps you relook at your numbers, relook at your production, and, uh, and, 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 and put yourself in more in a price point that's more favorable for you to win. Um, and a lot of times, you know, there's high times in the market and there's low times in the market. Just like in the stock market, the construction is no different. When the, when it's good, work is out there, you can charge a little bit more. Or when it's low, you, you know, there's different times you can charge more and make more during the construction project. And there's times where you cannot make as much. And getting feedback determines where you're at on that scale and where you need to place yourself to make sure you stay busy and keep work. So uh, another place I will look is, let me look one here. So another place I'll look is on Bitmail, right? Uh, I'll look on Bitmail for jobs. I don't have a subscription. I only have one subscription and that's to the Dodge Network, the, the uh, construction, Dodge Construction Central. That's one. The next one is, I think I can find it. Oh, read. Yeah. Read, read is the other one I usually have. So like this, like all from last year to this year, I've had Dodge Network. Dad. I probably switched to read when when the review comes up. What's up? You said you only got one. Yeah, only got one. Yeah. So um, and then I go on Bitmail. Bitmail is another one to look at. I also go on Building Connected is another one to look at for jobs. Um, and that's, oh, and then I'll go on different websites of general contractors that have their own work. You know, uh, there's different general contractors that have their own work that have websites. So I'll go there and look at jobs there as well. Um, like, remember, the, the top type of job I'm looking for is job that belongs to a general contractor, number one. And if it's prevailing or not prevailing. Okay. Next, um, I'll look at uh, the type of job and what it holds, how much work is on it, and I'll literally download the plans. And uh, I'm a, I'm, I am an estimator that bids from the computer. I don't necessarily, I don't have to print out any plans. I bid from the computer and I work from the computer. It took me a long time to get to that point to get out away from the paper. I know there's so many old school guys that I know now that still print out paper, use markers and colored pencils to highlight everything. I use the, I use blue bean. I use blue bean and Excel uh, to do my estimating. Okay. Um, once I see, open that project, see how big it is, I use again determined by the square footage. And I'll times it by what my normal uh, amount is for a uh, foundation. And I'll know if it's out of my realm of work, right? So if it goes over like 1.2 million, then I know, hey, I'm not going to bid on this, you know? Uh, and I don't want to get too many million dollar jobs on the books anyway. So uh, I try to go a little bit lower or try to kind of gauge when the next one's going to get done and the next one's going to start. All these jobs that I bid on that I get awarded with, they're still three to six months out to start. Because a lot of them have to do demo, grading, sewer install, you know, main subs install, and then pass certification, then get us in. And we got to do submittals and, and everything else there, insurance. So it, it takes a little while for us to get out there and start. And then it takes a while for us to get out there and finish for the site work. So we're off for six months to eight months, sometimes a year, depending on how big the project is before we actually come back out and do the site work, if I get the building and the site. I'm not that competitive on the site work. So uh, that's that's how I go for jobs. Once I select that job, I go ahead and put it on my bid list and send it to my office manager, and she starts to track the job. So. Once it's on our radar and I say, hey, I'm bidding on it, she starts to track it. She looks for addendums. She looks for uh, uh, 
if the bid date was changed during some type of addendum, she lets me know if the addendum came through so I can look at those plans. Um, um, and, um, and, and she will call for, she will call and find out, or she will look for the list of general contractors that's bidding on that job. So she can, since once I give her the bid, that whoever she's called, because she calls them all, you know, sometimes she called 20 of them, sometimes she's called five, but she calls them and asks them if they're bidding on it. And I, and then she'll let me know which ones have, which ones do concrete in-house uh, mainly. And then she'll say, hey, do I, do you want us to give a number to those, to, to this company? Because they do concrete in-house. And I'll say, yeah, yeah, nay. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. And she'll hand me back the package and I'll see who she bid on. And then I'll do my follow-ups or I'll have her do the follow-ups after the bid day. But usually I stay in the office doing bid time. Rarely do I leave. So bids are usually anywhere. And bids are usually due at 2 p.m. So I'll make sure I'm in the office usually the full day until that bid is done because once I submit my number, my number is close or right on or the lowest number, you start getting calls and people want to verify your number. They should be verifying. <laughs> that last bit I turned out, it wasn't so it wasn't so great as far as people verifying numbers, you know. But hey, I'm gonna let you go with that. Hopefully you learned a lot. I wanted to share a little bit with you. Uh, I'm gonna let you go. Hey, my construction entrepreneurs, hustle hard, then hustle hard. You have any questions about anything I talked about, the websites. Uh, where I go, if something wasn't clear, let me know in the comments. Let me know. I'm trying to respond. I'm back on. Uh, I'm trying to give my time into this, really help out like I've always been doing. So make sure you reach out to me and I'll try to respond, get you back your info. And if I was wrong in something, let me know, right? Hey, happy contracting out there. Let's make a lot of money for 2023. Hey, all right. So Make a lot of money, man. No. no? Okay. No.